Hey everybody, this is Colvon Glan, the artistic producer at Raven Theater. I wanted to take a moment at the top of this week's quilt and just thank you all so much for joining us on this little adventure. I've had a truly wonderful time getting to know members of our community based on the stories that they have shared with me. If you'd like to share your own story with the quilt audience, we would love to see it. You can submit those at info at raventheater.com. Also, if after listening to an episode of Quilt, you're interested in reading the original stories, we would be happy to provide you with them. That can also be done by emailing us at info at raventheater.com. If you have anyone in your life that you think would also enjoy joining us, please do send us along. We're hoping to bring a little bit of joy into every household with stories of your community and the people around us searching for and finding human connection in their lives. It's been a real joy, a real pleasure. Thank you so much, and please enjoy another week of Quilt. Several weeks ago, Stephen traveled with his sons from Chicago to Fort Worth to visit his sister Betsy, who had just been put into hospice care. On the drive to O'Hare, his eyes fell on a familiar blue-and-white checkered tin in his car, reminding him of the first time he had taken such a trip, and the way it had deepened his relationship with the woman to whom he was traveling to bid farewell. A few days into his freshman year at Austin College, the young man from West Texas was informed of his grandmother's passing, saying goodbye to a roommate he had hardly met, Stephen made his way back to family and funeral. While laying his grandmother to rest, he gained a new understanding of his sister. Six years his senior, she was in Arkansas interning for the next step in what her father referred to as the path towards being a lady preacher. In 1968, Betsy would become only the third woman to be ordained in the Southern Presbyterian Church. But Stephen's observation had less to do with the specifics of that path and more with the person walking it. Poised, adept, and understanding, she engaged with family and friends with open ease, an ease that caused Stephen to see Betsy for the first time more as an adult than a peer. The two flew back to Dallas together, him to catch a bus to Austin, her to connect for another flight, Big D to Little Rock. As they waited and flew and waited again, they talked. They stepped out into the world and talked as mature individuals, and on this day, a lifetime later, Stephen recalls that day as the best conversation the two ever shared, a conversation about the misgivings and worries of a young man taking his first steps into a new world, entrusted to a young woman on the verge of dedicating her life to assuaging such concerns. Isn't it nice how things sometimes work out that way? Stephen was the only person from his town at the college. His roommate was one of six from the same high school. That barrier was insurmountable. His sister's reassurances made a dent, but could not overcome the issue. Betsy's next move, on the other hand, masterful. Back at school, a blue and white checkered tin brimming with peanut brittle and topped with a simple note, you will do just fine, arrived for Stephen. Armed with the confidence of his sister's faith in him, and that keystone of all college friendships, snacks, Stephen had a plan. Returning to his roommate and the guys across the hall, he invited them to break some brittle and play some bridge. As they crunched their way through the jar and traded tricks taken and lost, their stories spilled out. Bonds began forming. Now, whether Betsy knew when she sent Stephen the jar that it would create an opportunity to connect with his fellows is her own little secret, though I'd like to imagine that there was a knowing smile as she wrote him. You will do just fine. Unfortunately, we cannot know. As Stephen and his sons touched down at Dallas-Fort Worth, they learned that during the flight his sister had passed. Though had he known that as he pondered this story on I-90 West, as he says, it would not have made any difference. The trip would have been made in any case. Stephen's story brings to mind a concept that I think about often. How do you prepare a loved one for the world? Giving advice, offering recommendations, providing a shoulder to cry on or an ear to bend, in each of these is an act of giving, of shearing, where a little piece of the giver is sliced off and grafted into the person of the receiver, like a sourdough starter. Betsy gave Stephen the example of her own poise, her own calm, her own confidence in him. He took that and grew it for himself, within himself. But this idea of shearing and sharing crosses over other symbols in the piece. We crack peanut brittle, smashing off bits to share, creating a communal experience for the snackers from the shards given out. 
In Bridge, you work off of the smallest pieces of information from a trusted teammate to develop a bidding strategy, taking small parts of their knowledge and incorporating them into your own. Stories themselves are fragments of a life that are shared with others, and from them we draw conclusions, lessons, and ideas to incorporate into our own approach to the world. This is the sentiment nested inside of Stephen's story that I find particularly interesting for our current times. While we may feel physically disconnected from others, we have, in fact, already incorporated so many pieces of them into us. I can actively feel the pieces of my own sister, my mother, my father, my friends and teachers, acting inside of me as I manage daily life sheltered in place. Of course, then I end up on the phone with some of them and they act much more directly on my life, but not everything is poetry. Stephen ended his story with the following. I have kept the jar. It has long resided in my various cars, holding my spare change. I thought I would tell my sister when I got to Dallas. I wondered whether she would remember. I had hoped so. I like knowing that any time I get into my car, the jar will remind me of my sister. Perhaps on occasion I will empty out the change, fill the jar with peanut brittle, and think fondly of her. I hope he does. I hope we all fill our jars with peanut brittle and think about the people who made us what we are, the pieces of them we carry from our pasts to our presents. Happy Wednesday, Quilt family.